welcome to All Out Rugby TV Network. Big decisions have to be made about South Africa's Super Rugby franchises. Joining us today are Tank Lanning and Zellum Nell giving their expert opinions how to tackle the South Africa's Super Rugby situation. Tank, first up, how do we, how do we fix this mess? Thanks, Bernie. Bloody nice tie, by the way. Right, so for me, the obvious solution is we find a place in the season to play Curry Cup with the box, the top four sides qualify. Over. However, the top dogs in the, in the commercial world say it won't work, even though it works in Europe. We don't have enough sponsors, we don't, don't have enough people. So we can't go that route. So it needs to be the franchise model. So my mate Narko Drotsky comes out this week, he says, listen, the Cats didn't work. You can't merge the two identities and try and form a new, unique franchise. So that model is not going to work. Some research out of Australia says we need some geographic identity. Okay, so we're going franchises, it needs to be geographic, uh, and it needs to be one of the existing franchises. So we have a look at some numbers. Nielsen did some great research this week. The rugby fans in South Africa, 22% Western Cape, 21% Gauteng, 19% Eastern Cape, then along comes Durban. Black rugby fans in South Africa, however, 27% top of the log, Eastern Cape. Where the most viewed teams on TV, okay, obviously TV's fallen off the cliff, we all know that, but those that are still watching, Stormers, most viewed, and the Kings are, are the least viewed, of course, because they've played the worst rugby, but aren't they a side in transition? The most supported teams in South Africa, according to the research, Sharks, 33%, and that's where my conundrum comes in. Because so if we do sort of a process, a process of elimination, it's impossible to argue the case for the cheaters. Not enough people there, not enough money happening, not, a, not enough interest. They're out. Okay, so the future seems to be Stormers, Kings, Sharks, and one of the Lions or Bulls. However, if we're going to ditch the cheaters, then to, take, to have only three franchises down the coastal side and one in the hinterland seems to not make sense, especially the amount of people interested in rugby and the money in that area. So it sounds dreadfully cliched, but I hope that there's been some sort of analysis and it makes sense, is that because it's 2018 and because we can't ditch the Sharks yet because they're the, they're the most supported team in South Africa, I'm afraid the solution has to be that both the Cheetahs and the Kings go. However, there are two things. The Sharks and, and the Stormers need to be res responsible, partly responsible for growth of rugby in the Eastern Cape. And the other most important thing is if we are ditching two franchises, and we need to, we're not sending those two that are going to play in Europe. South Africa can only staff four franchises and we need those to be staffed with our best players, not split across six. Because the reason we're doing this is to have four franchises. Thanks, Tank. I suppose that's one way of looking at it. Zels, what's your take? Yeah, thanks, Bernie. Uh, my answer will be a lot shorter than Tank's. Uh, I think any time we start talking about cutting super rugby franchises, Bernie, uh, you know, you've got to get out your box of tissues and have a little whimper uh, because the fans from whichever teams you're cutting are, are you know, a, a, sad to see their team go, even though none of them actually go to the stadium to watch these guys play. I think the, the solution is cut all of the franchises. Get rid of this entire franchise system. Let's have SA Rugby responsible for launching four of their own franchises using broadcast money and sponsor money that they hold back uh, to staff these sides with a, ma a management team that they handpick and with players that they offer super rugby contracts, provincial players that they offer two-year super rugby contracts. So let's have four franchises called the Hawks, the Rhinos, the Giants, and the Vipers. Uh, and, and let's have the, the, the sporting facilities in South Africa, whether it's rugby unions or whether it's other sporting facilities that can actually host these rugby sides, let's have them uh, bid for the right to host a super rugby team for two years based on a business model and logistics. And let's pick the best location for these teams and commit to two years to having the Vipers play in Joburg. And that team is stocked with players that are chosen by SA Rugby and a management team that's put together by SA Rugby. That way SA Rugby can control where our best players play, where our best coaches play. It creates pathways for everybody. For me, it's a win-win-win situation and that's a three-letter word that South Africans can really afford to hear again. Well, that was very, very interesting. Really super stuff. Until next week.